Okay, Tom. So where are we today? We're at the Banbury Run. No, indeed, at the VMC. You see, what is actually which VMC is all now? Is it actually? But it's the Banbury Run, and it's for pre-1931 motorcycles. Yeah. Let's go check it out. The Banbury Run is an annual event for pre-1931 motorcycles that these days runs from the National Motor Museum, near Gaydon in Warwickshire. The event is the largest gathering of pre-1931 motorcycles and tricycles in the world, although it is limited to 500 machines. Oh, what a very bunch of machines you do have. Some beams are much in evidence, like this beautifully restored example. Although some machines had a much more original patina about them. Like this mighty V-twin Royal Enfield, and this rather more humble Moto Picane. And machines like this cotton really do show the ingenuity of the engineers back in the day with its wonderful triangulated frame. But for fans of competition, there's also a good smattering of Nortons around too, both overhead cam and overhead valve. And speaking of valves, why not this lovely Rudge Whitworth with its four valve head? And it wouldn't be a Bambi run if had a good smattering of Scots, and there were quite a few in attendance. I have to say I've always loved Scots. For me, they are the hooligan machines of the veteran world. And in case you thought it's all about British bikes, check out this lovely Harley Davidson. But if you can't afford a mighty V-twin, check out this lovely James two-stroke commuter bike. Time for the first bikes to get underway, and it's mostly made up of veteran machines. These run a slightly shorter course that doesn't take into account Sunrise Hill. Nevertheless, the course is still around 30 miles. And just to make things more interesting, the roads aren't closed, so you're on the road alongside modern traffic, which should make life interesting. Some of the earliest machines out there are forer cars. These freewheel contraptions seem incredibly dangerous, and you certainly wouldn't get me in the front seat. And just to prove my hooligan comment about Scott, <laughs> But for me, hero of the day is this guy. If it isn't hard enough riding a veteran machine, this guy is doing it standing up. Riding a motorcycle combination is a truly unique experience. If you haven't tried it, you probably should. This next group of riders are all volunteers from the National Motorcycle Museum, so well worth a round of applause, I think. Machines are released row by row, so it takes some time for some machines to finally get to the start. So it's a good idea, if you can, to warm your engine through, but not too much. They the final row to be released includes these lovely 1929 BSA slopers. It also has a lovely sunbeam a little bit further down the road, owned by a friend of ours named Phil. We didn't see him at the end, so hopefully he had a good ride. If you really want to test your metal and your skills as a motorcyclist, these are the machines to do it on. Riding a modern machine with all its traction control and all the gadgets is child's play by comparison. Don't believe me? Just give it a try sometime. At the top of the hill, just past the start, there's a long straight section, where they finally get to open the machines up fully for the first time.
These Scott flying squibbles were some of the last machines away. What a sound they made. With the last machine's gone, you've got a few minutes to check out the museum and probably get a bite to eat. Not a lot of bikes on show, but there was this lovely Morgan three-wheeler with its matchless engine. It would appear that both Morgan and Bruff Superior were losing faith in Jap engines by the end of the 30s and moving towards the matchless supplied V-twins. And at last we did finally find a motorcycle, although this too does have a car connection. Following many companies, Rover had first started as a bicycle maker, then a motorcycle maker before finally moving into cars, for which they are now much better known, with their Land Rover Mark surviving through to today. Oh, well, it was first back in, game, so it's it's obviously got good grip. <laughs> back back outside, two machines from the Sammy Miller Museum have made it back already. The first bike home was this lovely Cami Vela set, which came in alongside a Grindley Peerless V Twin, written by racing and trials legend himself, Sammy Miller. And this particular Grindley Pierce is very interesting because it makes use of a Barm and Stroud sleeve valve power unit. Another machine from the Miller Museum, although not actually on the run, was this 1912 French Verdal with its radial engine. A machine which they would fire up and demonstrate to the crowd. What an amazing and truly unique motorcycle. Machines would continue to roll in for the rest of the afternoon, but we have to take our leave unfortunately, because we've got a bike to grab. So that's it for the Bamboo Room for another year. If you found it interesting, go along and check out the event next year yourself. Hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course thank you very much for watching.